Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to Dental Excellence. And for today, this is the 10th video in my Dental Excellence video series. And for today, I'd like to share with you retraction cord placement for the porcelain veneer patient. I'm gonna share with you the technique I use to place retraction cords when I'm finalizing the preparation and taking the final impression. I have a quick, quick little tip and trick that I want to share with you. So um, let me share with you the materials I'm using first. And the material that I use, I like the Ultra Pack cords from Ultradent. And for veneer cases, I'm usually using the triple zero cord right here as my first cord. And then I use the single zero cord as my second cord. I find the other ones are a little too big. You could even use triple zero and then go to double zero. With veneer cases, for the most part, I'm, I'm generally placing my margins equigingival. I'm rarely placing the margins subgingivally. So I don't need a lot of retraction. I want enough retraction that the tissue's out of the way and I can see the margin clearly and I can smooth the margin nicely and I get a good impression. But I don't need a tremendous amount of retraction. So that's why I use smaller cords. And then the big uh, tip that I use, or trick that I'll tell you about is for um, veneers, for example, say I'm preparing a cuspid to cuspid, upper uh, six anterior teeth. I'll actually have my assistant cut a really long piece of cord and I'll pack it in all the six teeth in one shot, in one piece. And then I'll do that with the second. And especially with the second, what that does is when I pull the cord to take the impression, it's much quicker. There's less time to pull each individual cord. And by the time you get to the sixth one, the first one's starting to collapse in a little bit and you don't get as good an impression. I could pull that in one piece and then inject the impression material fairly quickly and I have a perfect impression. So that's the biggest tip. And it's quicker to inject or to uh, pack one long piece of cord around six veneer preps as opposed to um, individual, six individual cords. So those are the two reasons that I do this. And thirdly, it's just cool. I think it's just cool. Um, I don't do it with crowns because with crowns you're going circumferentially around the whole tooth, with, but with veneers I'm going at most three quarters of the way around the tooth. So um, I, like, I like this single cord technique or single, piece of cord for multiple teeth, and then a two cord technique. And then the packer I use is the Fisher Ultradent Packer, keep it within the same system. And the little um, serrations of the packer make it work well with that particular retraction cord. So let me share with you a video filmed in my microscope uh, just last week, uh, prepping a veneer case and placing the cords. So you'll see uh, the actual cord placement right here. So here it goes. So I've already placed the initial cord, the black cord. So I've placed the black cord and I'm going to now, and I, I fine tune and smoothed and polished the margins. So the margins are ideal. I'm now going to place my second cord, the purple cord. And you'll see how quickly and easily six teeth can be packed with retraction cord with a single cord technique. The other key here is I'm not trying to pack these cords really deep. Again, my margins are mostly super, gin super or equal gingival, mostly equal gingival. So I'm not trying to pack deep. I'm just trying to get horizontal displacement of the tissue, not so much vertical displacement, mostly horizontal displacement so I can have a good impression. So you can see how quickly this goes with veneer cases. And this was a case where I am uh, re-restoring teeth that were restored with veneers from almost 20 years ago. So I have to use the, um, you know, we broke in contact with this case because of the previous veneers. The good news though, this previous veneer case didn't overly prepare the facial enamel. So I have good facial enamel to bond my new veneers to. So the previous dentist didn't overdo the preparations, which is nice but they are prepped interproximally more than I usually would in most cases. I, if you look at, and you've been following me, you'll see that I don't prep all the interproximal contacts out in most of my veneer cases. I usually leave the contacts intact. But look how quickly I can pack these cords. Like this is now four teeth done, and they're perfectly horizontally displaced. 
Now I'm going to do the last one. You can see my assistants made this one piece of cord fairly long. It's in fact too long for the space. I'd rather, I always tell her, make it a little too long, not a little too short. A little too short completely kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. A little too long is no big deal. You'll see what I do with a little too long. We basically decide to give this a little cut. So I'm going to tell her just cut it right here. Easy enough to cut. And then I'm, I'm in good shape. So I'm going to hold it up. Hold the piece that I don't want cut. And she'll come in with the scissors. Cut that. I have a little excess. No big deal. And that's real easy. Six teeth prepped and our uh, retraction cord placed in six teeth, not a lot of handing back and forth of individual cords, less than two minutes to pack retraction cord for six veneer preps. Again, the advantage is the impression. You know, you get an awesome impression. You can take a look at this permadyne final impression. Looks beautiful, great horizontal displacement of the tissue for this uh, perfect marginal uh, impression of the uh, preps. And um, here's the big key. I can pull that cord again. Here's the key again. I can pull that cord really quickly, rinse off the preps, and place the impression material, the light body impression material, before the tissue can retract uh, or can uh, collapse from the retraction. So that's the nice thing about a single cord technique. I love this technique. It's been something I've used for almost 10 years, and uh, I just think it's cool. So I wanted to share that with you with Dental Excellence. Nice short little Dental Excellence video. Once again, um, my goal with these videos is to give you little tips that you can use in your practice. Short little tips, not long videos. And um, my underlying goal is to introduce you to my teaching material so that a lot of people, you know, they email me, they tell me how much they like these little YouTube videos, and hopefully this will entice you to actually join my occlusion design program down the road when we open it for a new class, because if you like these short little YouTube videos, you'll really love the comprehensive training available in my occlusion design program or even my aesthetic design or my functional occlusion programs. But my occlusion design program is my flagship clinical training program. So once again, you can do this kind of dentistry. I totally believe that you can do this kind of dentistry. And I believe that beautiful dentistry with precise fit and occlusion is not just for the gurus. So thank you very much. And we'll hopefully connect at some point in the future. Take care.